In this video, we'll be learning how to connect a MIDI keyboard to a computer for recording and what on earth we do with all of these cables. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. This is a MIDI controller keyboard and this is a MIDI synthesizer. This one over here doesn't have any sounds in it whatsoever. It's simply used to control the computer and control the sounds which come from the computer. This on the other hand has its own sounds and can be used as a MIDI controller as well as being controlled by the computer. Now I get a lot of messages from people saying they're confused about how to get the sound of their MIDI synth or drum machine or tone generator into the final mix of their song on their computer. So I will be tackling that today, how to connect this MIDI synth as well as how to connect the MIDI controller keyboard. Now if this sounds like the kind of content you'd normally be interested in, all about home recording, DAWs, plugin reviews, gear reviews, that kind of thing, then please do make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now let's get stuck into connecting this MIDI synthesizer to our computer for recording. So realistically, in order to connect your MIDI keyboard to your computer, you're going to need an audio interface. Now this is a pretty old one and no longer available, so I'll be recommending another couple in the description down below, which I think are pretty good. Now I do recommend you try and get one with two audio inputs. Some of them only have one, and if you've already got one like that, it's fine. It just means that the sound from your synth will only be in mono. Now on the back of this unit, there are two MIDI ports, an in and an out. Now some of the more modern interfaces don't have MIDI ports on them, so I'll be suggesting an alternative method to connect up the MIDI side to your computer a little bit later on in this video. But for now, let's get stuck into connecting our MIDI synth to the MIDI ports on the back of our audio interface. So here we are looking at the back of my MIDI keyboard and the back of my audio interface. Now you'll notice the MIDI keyboard has three MIDI ports labeled through, out and in. We're only interested in the out and the in ports today. We're not bothered about the through port. And indeed your keyboard may not have a through port. That doesn't matter. Now on the back of the audio interface, we also have two MIDI ports labeled out and in. So what we're gonna do is take one end of our MIDI cable and plug it into the out port here. Now, you can only plug it in one way. It's impossible to put it in the wrong way, but do make sure you line it up correctly so that you don't accidentally bend any of the pins or damage the port at all. Now, the other end of this goes into the in port of the audio interface. It's important to get this right. We go from the out port on the keyboard to the in port on the audio interface. Lots of people get this part wrong. They do out to out and that's where they get confused and they get no sound. Now, with the other cable, we're gonna plug it into the in port. I'll just find the correct orientation. The in port of the keyboard and we're gonna take the other end and where are we gonna plug it in? See if you can guess it, into the out port of the audio interface. So the way you want to think of it is like this. Data is flowing out from the keyboard into the computer via the audio interface. Now when the computer controls the keyboard, data is coming out from the audio interface into the keyboard to tell the keyboard what to do. So we're connected up and we're ready to start playing our keyboard in our software. So if your audio interface does not have any MIDI connections, then I would suggest something like this. This is a cable with MIDI connectors on one end and a USB plug on the other. Now this end plugs into your MIDI keyboard, this plugs into your computer, and once you've done that, you will have that MIDI device available in your software. Now a word of warning on this. I thought I was being clever and bought some really cheap ones of these on eBay for around about seven or eight dollars each, and none of them were worked properly whatsoever. I subsequently found out in forums across the internet that lots of people had the same problem with these cheap ones and really I wasted my money. So for that reason I'm recommending a reputable one in the description down below and while it's more expensive you'll save money in the long run by not making the same mistake as me. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this method to connect my keyboard to my computer. 
So here I am in my audio recording software on my computer, and this software is called Cakewalk by BandLab. Now it's a type of software called a DAW, or Digital Audio Workstation. Now there's lots of DAWs available, and lots of them are very good, and if you're already using one, that's fine, you can continue to use it. But I've recommended this one in the past because it's completely free and it is fully featured. So check out my video up above there to see what I said about Cakewalk by BandLab. Now, the first thing we need to do is make sure our DAW can use those MIDI connections that we've just made. So here in Cakewalk, I'm going to go up to Edit and then down to Preferences. Of course, it's going to be different in your DAW, and I'll click on that. And then I'm going to go down to MIDI Devices here, and that shows a list of MIDI devices on my system which are available for both input and output. Now the one I went for in the end was that MIDI to USB cable and it's uh, shown up here as the USB MIDI cable and it's actually already selected for input there and also for output. I'll just double check. Yep, it's selected for output there. So I don't need to change anything there but you may want to check on yours and make sure it is enabled. So I'll click on OK. And then I'm going to actually create a MIDI track to record on. So I right click there and then I select insert MIDI track and that inserts a new MIDI track. Now the next thing I want to do is make sure I do select that particular MIDI device for input on this track. So I go to the input section here and I go on that and select USB MIDI cable. Now I'm going to select MIDI Omni, which means it's going to listen for everything on all MIDI channels out of all of the 16 which are available. Now I'm not going to talk about MIDI channels in this tutorial, that's a bit too in depth. But go ahead and select MIDI Omni, and that means it can hear everything that's coming from that device. I'm going to record enable it here by hitting this record button here. And if I play something on my synthesizer, you can see the meters go up and down there, and you can hear it. So that means I'm ready to go ahead and record. So let me just record a few bars of music. Oh yeah, wonderful, huh? So you can see the MIDI notes there. Now if I moved the playhead to the beginning of that and I press play, you hear nothing at all. And that's because it's recorded the input from the keyboard, but it's not outputting to anywhere. So in the output section here, I need to again select my output device, which is that USB MIDI cable. So it's going to send that MIDI information back down through that cable to my keyboard, and it's going to tell my keyboard what notes to play. So I'll hit play again. and there's my wonderful little tune. So I've recorded that, and this is where lots of people encounter problems, and then they email me. Because what's gonna happen next when you go through the process of recording that whole song, you're then gonna to wanna to mix it down so that you can play it to the world. And lots of people go ahead and mix it down by exporting to a stereo wave file or an MP3. And then they say to me, but I can't hear those MIDI instruments in it. And that's because although you can hear it through your mixer or through your headphones or what have you, the computer can't hear it. It's not actually recording audio at this point. It's only recording a kind of a, a record of events, of notes which were pressed and how long they were played for, etc. So what we actually have to do is hook up the audio outputs from our keyboard to our audio interface. So let's go ahead and do that. So although with our computer and our keyboard we can record which notes we play and when, as of yet our computer can't actually hear our keyboard. So to get it to do that we're going to need to connect up some audio cables. Now on the back of my keyboard here you can see two outputs marked and they are R for right and L stroke mono. Now, if you're using an audio interface which only has, say, one audio input, then you'll need to use that jack there which is labeled L slash mono. So I'll just pop a quarter inch jack in there. That's the same cable that we use uh, for guitars, etc. And then I'll plug the other end into the port which I have available 
on the audio interface. So you'll notice that these audio interfaces have these really big ports. That's because you can plug either a regular XLR microphone cable in there or a quarter inch jack as we just did. Now, if we want to record our synth in stereo, then we need an audio interface which has two inputs like this one. So we will connect up another quarter inch jack here to the right channel on the keyboard and then to the other channel which is spare on the audio interface and now our keyboard will be able to send audio to our audio interface and our computer can actually hear the sounds which it's making. Now I would recommend that when you plug these in you have the volume turned all the way down on your MIDI keyboard and you have the input gain turned all the way down on your audio interface then gradually turn it up to get the kind of level that you want. So now that I've made all of my audio connections, I can go ahead and record the audio from the synth while I play the MIDI. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert an audio track into Cakewalk here, that shows up here. And as the input, I'm gonna select uh, wherever I plugged those jack plugs into on my audio interface. Now my audio interface has quite a few inputs, so I happen to know it's the last one down here, the stereo one, number five. So I'll select that, I'll arm it for record, and if I play some notes on the keyboard, you can see that the meters go up there so I know it's going to record. So all I have actually have to do is just click on the record button. I don't have to play anything again because the synth is gonna be played by the MIDI there, but it's gonna record the actual audio this time. So let's click record and do that. Okay, so now when I play that back, it's gonna play that MIDI and it's going to play the audio as well. I'll just unmark that for recording. So what I actually wanna do is mute the MIDI part now because otherwise I'll have kind of a double playing thing going on that sound horrible. So I'll click on mute there and I'll click on play. and you can see the audio being played there. So that's now ready for mix down. Now that's kind of committed. So it's something that you're probably gonna to wanna to do towards the end of the process. Because if you did go ahead and actually re-record this MIDI up here or change any of the notes, you would need to re-record that audio. You may even wanna change the sounds, for example, from one instrument to another. You may wanna change the tempo, all kinds of things. So it's something you wanna kind of leave towards the end of the process or when you're really committed to that instrument being finished in terms of playing. So with all that done, we can go ahead and mix down our song. So I'd like to take a moment to talk about MIDI controller keyboards. And we're looking at the back of mine here, and you can see there's a USB connection and there's two MIDI connections, but there's no actual audio connections at all. And that's because controller keyboards don't actually have any sound in them. They don't output any sound. Instead, they just control sounds and usually virtual instruments on the computer itself. Now usually the best way to connect them to your computer is just with the USB connection. And you would take a connection such as this, plug it in, plug the other end into your computer, and then you can use it to control the sounds on your computer. So you may be wondering why they would have MIDI ports. Well, they could be used as controllers for other devices, not just computers. They could be connected to other MIDI devices, but also it's kind of useful in some ways because it makes you operating system and driver independent. I Meaning you don't have to worry about it going out of date with drivers and operating systems if you're just connecting up with MIDI to your audio interface. Now in my case, it's much more simple than that. My USB port died some years ago, so I actually use just the MIDI cables. So I do hope that you found this video useful and you're now able to connect your devices successfully. Now unfortunately, there is some misinformation going around YouTube on this particular subject, but you can help with that situation by making sure you hit the thumbs up button to like this video and also consider sharing it so that other people can get the correct information about this subject. Now if you didn't like this video, do make sure you hit the dislike button twice. If you like this kind of content, then make 
make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my other videos. Now you may consider watching one of the two videos on the screen right now. I mean, this one for example is pretty good. Uh, it, a lot of care went into making it. Uh, it's amusing here and there. And uh, this one is, well, possibly much more up your street to be honest with you and I mean, I mean they could both be useful in which case which one do you click maybe if you click on this one